Speed O'Clock Story Time Today's story is A Good Friend Yasin's family moved from Iraq to England when he was a young boy. Yasin did not want to leave his home in Samara but his father said that it was best for the family because it was not it was not safe to live there anymore and he wanted his son to grow up in a country that was accepting of all people yasin's father told his son that england was a multicultural country where people lived and worked together regardless of race or or religious beliefs although yasin was not happy about leaving iraq He soon settled into his new life in a big city called London. London was very exciting with all its tall buildings and museums, and Yasin especially liked the London Planetarium and the big river Thames with all of its old bridges. Yasin even made friends with a boy who lived net next door called Andrew. All summer long, Andrew and Yasin played in the park or went to the zoo with Andrew's mom. and you shared his toys and his comics with yasin and told him all about his favorite superheroes they even built a camp in yasin's back garden where they would hide from the grown ups the summer was a fun time and young yasin soon felt quite at home in london even though it was a big city and not nearly as sunny and hot as it was in samara His English got better and better especially with all with with his friend Andrew. Although there were a lot of words that Yasin did not understand and he often felt silly because he couldn't speak as well as he would like. When September finally came around and the leaves began to fall from the trees, Yasin's father explained that it was time for his son to go to school. Yasin was 7 years old so he would be going to year 3 of the local primary school the same year as his friend Andrew. Although Yasin was very nervous about going to school, his father and mother assured him that it would be a fun place where he would meet lots of new friends and learn lots of interesting new things. English schools are supposed to be very good, said Yasin's mother, and your English will get better in no time. assured his father Yasin was still not convinced but when his when Andrew knocked on the door that morning with a big smile on his face saying how fun it was it was going to be at school Yasin felt much better because he trusted his friend the two boys chatted all the way to school and you told Yasin about all the playgrounds and who was the best teacher and what boys were the most fun and what girls were pretty and how they were often served custard for pudding at lunch time yasin did not know what custard was but andrew looked very excited about it so yasin thought it must be taste very good but when the boys got to their class things did not go how yasin imagined that they would be the teacher told andrew to take a seat at the front of the class as she introduced yasin to the rest of the children he did not like standing up in front of the class and one boy shouted that he was a smelly foreigner the boys and the girls all laughed and then another boy made fun of yasin's accent and when he was asked to say his name and where he came from I can't understand him miss he can't even speak english said the nasty boy Finally Yasin was allowed to take a seat at the back of the class but he wished that he was sitting next to Andrew as he felt very alone the girl sitting beside him kept looking at him as a strange way that that made Yasin uncomfortable and during the lesson she put her hand up and asked the teacher if he could move places Yasin did not understand what he had done to offend the girl 
When the bell went, it was time to go out in the playground. All the children closed their books, but on their coats and put on their coats and headed out of the door into the bright autumn sunshine. The teacher kept Yasin back for for a moment and gave him a badge with the name on, which she pinned to his jumper. There you go, she said with a smile. Now all of the children will be able to learn your name. Yasin thought that the badge looked silly, and when he went out into the playground, all of the children began pointing and laughing. You've got a girl's name," said a small boy with blonde curly hair. Yasin wanted to explain that it was not a girl's name, but he was too nervous. When Yasin got nervous, his English was not very good, and the words always got stuck in his throat. He was very sad that he wanted to run out of the playground back to his mother and father and never return to the school again. But just as he was about to run, he heard a familiar voice. Hi, Yasin, and when he looked up, there was Andrew standing right beside him. Andrew looked at looked at the children gathered around and shook his head. What's wrong with you lot? He asked. I told my friend Yasin that school was fun. Why are you ruining it for him? He's different, said a very tall girl who was standing at the front of the crowd. So are you, said Andrew. You are the tallest girl in the whole school, and you don't like it when people make fun of you, do you? Then Andrew looked at the boy with the curly hair, and you don't like it when people say that you have girls here, he said to the boy. We all are different, and that is what makes us interesting. What would life be like if we were all same as and one another? There was a silence among the children. Then Yasin lifted his head high. Boring, he said with a smile. That's right! Exclaimed Andrew, returning his friend's smile. Really boring. And with all of the children began to laugh. Really boring. They chanted at one another. Andrew went on to explain how he had spent the summer with Yasin and how. They had built a camp together and played in the park, and how Yasin preferred Batman to Superman, and how he really was different because he didn't even like hot dogs. The children all laughed some more, and soon everybody was talking about all the things that made them different from one another. Peter Jenkins even lifted his jumper and showed everybody a big purple birthmark on the front of his belly. Now that's what I call different," he said triumphantly. "I bet none of you have a big birthmark like me." When break time was over, Andrew put his ha- hand up in the class and suggested to the teacher that they should spend the lesson talking about how great it was that everybody was so different from. Everybody else, and how people came to England from all over the world to begin a new life, just like his friend Yasin. The teacher agreed that it was so important to be an individual, and she also said how wonderful it was that the whole Britain was a, was such a multicultural island. Yasin wrote these two words down in his book and promised himself that he would learn them both and remember them always. He also wrote the f- word friend in his book. He already knew what that meant, but he just wanted to write it down because he felt so lucky to have a good friend like Andrew, who stood up for people and did did not judge them just because they were different. Friendship is the only cement that will ever hold the world together. The end. That brings us to the end of our story time. In addition to it, please subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends and family. Do support Read O'Clock and help it grow. 
I'll see you soon with an amazing story. Till then, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.